Hello again. Uh, I thought I'd do a short blog today because this rather interesting package has come and I'd like to share its contents with you and tell you why I've bought it. So let's have a look at what's inside the box. I've been wanting to order one of these for a very long time but I haven't had a good enough excuse to spend the money on it. But I do have a good excuse now and I'll explain what that is in a minute. Anyway, what you see inside the box once I've removed all the packaging is an old-fashioned telephone. Some of you might know that I built a busy wall for my little boy. Um, that's a piece of wood with loads of mechanisms and things that he can pull and push and turn on. And I've been thinking about the next level that I can take him to. So I thought it might be quite fun to have uh, an old telephone uh, mounted on the board so he can play with the various bits of it. And there's nothing to beat the old dial telephone. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Part of the reason for doing a bit of a blog on this is I thought there must be a whole section of society and perhaps some of the people who view my physics videos who have never actually used one of these. They may have seen one, but they probably wouldn't know um, how it used to work. So um, I thought we'd have a quick talk about the phone. Um, if you pick one up, these uh, on the back have a number on them. And uh, if you can see here, this is a 746 and it's a Model 1 made in 1971. Um, I think these first came out um, in about 1968 and um, so this is a one that was made soon after then. Um, rather strangely I haven't found any evidence of them being in brown so I, I guess this one um, might have had a changed case on it. I, I, I have no idea. Um, but you can buy them on eBay now and they're going for quite good money. And um, what people are doing is they're converting them because if you plug them into the phone system and um, they won't work normally, you have to uh, convert them so they do work. And um, I guess it was one of the things I played with when I was very young and thought about um, electronics and electricity. And um, the first thing we noted is that um, they didn't plug in at home. Um, so this one's been modified to uh, fit into the modern phone network. Um, they, in fact, used to go straight into the wall. And it was only much later on that they invented a plug that you could plug in and out. Um, quite an interesting reason for that, because um, if the cable was screwed straight into the wall, you couldn't change your phone. So um, British Telecom or the GPO at the time um, had a complete monopoly on phones. And it was only a bit later on that they invented a pluggable phone um, so other people could make compatible phones and sell those so you didn't have to put up with the one that you were actually given and you didn't have to pay the, um, the rental fee on it. So the plan before I let Barry loose on this and put it on his busy wall to play with is to give it a bit of a, a clean up and a, a bit of a polish um, because it's a bit of a mess at the moment. And it's also missing on the front um, the disc that used to be here. And uh, some of you remember that used to be a paper disc in the middle and the lower half of it had your phone number on it. And ours, when I was a kid, was 278. Yeah, a three-digit phone number. And my dad tells me um, that when he was a kid, or at least a little bit older, um, he said their phone number was 8. That was it, 8. Um, and then that routed to the local exchange. On the top half of the disc, um, it used to have various things or numbers you need to know about. And typically it said 100 for the operator, so you dialed up 100 for the operator and 999 for the emergency services. So um, I'll try and get one of those paper discs, put it into here. Um, I'll probably invent uh, a number for Barry, um, his own number, maybe his birthday, and then put the plastic disc on top um, that kept that piece of paper in place. Now, I think this is an absolutely wonderful design. I like lots of features about this phone and some of them I'd forgotten about. I'd forgotten that if you put your thumb on top and do that, you can carry it around the place, um, limited by the length of the cable that used to be stuck into the wall. Um, and then I remember that if you answered a call, um, if you said to someone, look, I'll just go and find out about that, you could put the receiver on the phone like that and come back and pick it back up again. And someone said to me, no, no, that's not right, FJ. Um, what we used to do is that. And of course, the phone's been designed so you can leave the handset like that perfectly well. And then when you finish the call, you can put it down. So an absolutely wonderful design, I think. 
Now, I thought it'd be quite fun just to talk about a few of the words that go with telephones, and they still exist. Now, if smells can bring back memories, so can sounds. And uh, some of you will immediately be taken back 30 or 40 years if I do this. Um, and it's this bit of the phone that I wanted Barry to play with particularly. I was going to buy a, a dial on its own, but it's it's actually the same price to buy um, an old used phone. So um, some of the terminology we use with phones today came from these characters, or at least slightly older versions of them. So on your iPhone or your um, your smartphone, um, you dial a number. So if I want to dial um, 999, I put my finger in 9, bring it to the end, let go wait and again and again oh i've just dialed an eight gotta start again but i didn't even pick up the handset so it was a bit of a fiddly business but it's something we were really really used to so the younger amongst you might now know where dialing a number comes from dialing a number refers to making a phone call you had to pick up the handset OK, and then you had to dial the number. So if I was going to dial the um, uh, the operator to find something out, I'd dial 100. One, zero, zero. And the phone used to scoot around on the desk if it wasn't um, bolted down properly. Um, and then I'd talk to them. And when I'd finished talking to them, I'd hang up. And um, on older phones that maybe sat on the wall, um, this bit would sit there and it would be hung up when you weren't making the call and then you would pick up the receiver and this of course was your your handset so a mobile phone handset is sort of the whole thing these days uh, but we referred to this part as being the handset so um, many of the words that are used on modern phones um, you know have come from these older technologies and and dial is the one I particularly like and when you had a longer phone number um, you'd have to pick up the phone and you sort of have to hold it from scooting around on the desk and you'd be forever making a mistake and if you'd made a mistake or oh, before you got the wrong number you'd hang up um, and try again. If the line, you weren't very sure if the line was dead there'd be a bit of this going on um, until you could hear um, the tone that you needed before you dialed. So um, yeah it was a bit of fun and in some ways I think um, they're more fun than the uh, the modern phones that we have now. Oh and I forgot to say of course you ring someone you ring them what put a ring around them what does all that mean okay but I won't take the case off this one um, but inside um, when the phone rang it did exactly that there's a couple of bells and uh, a clapper between them that knocks the bells and when the phone went yeah, wasn't quite that rapidly, but you'd hear that noise and um, you'd pick up. And as soon as you picked up, these switches would stop the bell ringing and it would connect you to the person talking. And if you'd had enough of them, you'd hang up. Um, one thing you could do, of course, is if they kept their receiver up, you could hang up and pick up again. And they were still on the line, typically. Um, but um, that's a very old sound and I'm always amused when I hear people's mobile phones ringing using that old um, bell telephone sound as their uh, ringtone. So finally on this for the younger ones amongst you, uh, if the phone was screwed to the table you could walk as far as the cable would stretch out and it's a lovely sort of stretchy cable and that was it so you were stuck in the same room. If the phone wasn't bolted to the wall or the table, you could take it around with you, but you'd end up sort of having this sort of wedged under your uh, neck, trying to talk to someone. And you could go as far as the cable that was stuck in the wall. Um, you couldn't text. Yeah, you couldn't text anyone. There wasn't any letters on it to send um, letter data. Um, all you could really do was um, dial and talk to them. And there was no screen. So sometimes you dialed away and uh, you talked to the person on the other end of the line and it wasn't who you thought it was because you dialed a wrong number. But there was no way of telling what number you dialed uh, once you'd let go of the dial. So um, that's the old fashioned telephone. And I think I might see if I can get this one working and um, use it. 
Oh, perhaps not, because uh, I bought this and it wasn't meant to be a fun present for me, as everything ends up being. So um, this is for Barry. We'll give it a clean up. I think he'll really enjoy just the noise it makes and picking things up. I think he'll like this um, stretchy cable and will probably completely destroy it. Um, and um, the most fun to be had, other than picking it up and uh, shaking it around, um, is, of course, playing with this dial. And um, he's only about six months old, so we haven't done very much dialing yet. But he sort of got the idea that if he pushed this, it sprung back. So I'm hoping he's going to have a lot of fun with it. Oh, one last story before we finish. I remember when I was a kid, my dad brought two old telephones home, um, a bit older than these, and um, a reel of cable and a power supply. And he showed us how to wire them up. And we had them right the way across the garden. Um, so we used to uh, make telephone calls to each other. And um, then we did it from the garden shed to the house and had a whole load of fun. Um, so I'm really grateful he showed me things like that when I was younger. Now, OK, I'm starting off with a, a boy that's only half a year old. But if he has fun playing with it, um, then it's been worth my while. And so if I remember, I'll try and let you know how he gets on.